Hi, this is Kristen L, or just Kristen. Welcome to my channel. I talk about science fiction and fantasy books and the awards that go with them. This is my final wrap up for the month of May. I usually just combine my last weekly wrap up with my monthly wrap up, but I decided that this month I'm gonna try doing them separately. So I will, I will try. <laughs> I plan to post my monthly wrap up tomorrow and obviously my weekly wrap up today. So this is journal number four for the month of May. Um, I finished two books this week. Um, and I'm doing my novelette challenge, which I've talked about in other videos, um, where I read one novelette every week and, until I've read all of the Hugo and Nebula nominations. So this week was The Pill, and I wasn't able to find that one for free online as I was with all of the rest. Um, so luckily I was able to borrow Big Girl from the library and this collection contains The Pill. So I was only gonna read that. And then I loved it. I'll talk about it more at the end of this video. I, for now, I really, really loved the writing. I was curious after finishing that novelette to read some of the other things in the collection so I went back to the beginning of the book and I read the first short story which was super super short and it was just also very engaging and very well written and I really enjoyed it so I just kept on reading and the entire collection is actually a pretty quick read it is not a large collection it all of it all together it's a novelette it's short stories it's essays um, some of them are autobiographical and most of them, but not all of them, center around this theme of being a big girl, of being particularly a fat woman in society today. And she just explores that from all of these different angles. Some of this is speculative fiction, some of this is personal autobiographical essays and, and things. So she really just kind of looks at it from all these different angles and it's just really well written, really thought provoking and also really relevant. Fat phobia is such a present problem. And I, I really wanna hope that it's getting better. I think even in my own lifetime, I've seen it improve. I think it used to be much worse, but it's still so bad. And I think if you are not yourself a fat person, it's easy to not notice or to not realize how bad it is. Like even skinny people are dissatisfied with their body. So it's just the way our society is right now. And there's work being done to combat that but so I, I can feel like as a small person um, I still have body issues I still have you know I need body positivity or just body neutral neutrality I actually prefer the term body neutrality I need that for myself but I am actually pretty privileged in terms of size um, so reading all of these stories and essays by Meg Ellison where she just talks about what it's like, the pressures she feels, the fat phobia she has to deal with, just the practical things like fitting into an airline seat are things that I'm not naturally going to think about. So I really appreciated being able to read about that in this book. Um, it's also just plain enjoyable. Like this is not work. This is not hard or depressing or difficult. It's a lot of fun to read. I really enjoyed it. It's entertaining. Her writing, her prose is, I keep saying it's edgy. I don't know how else to put it. It's edgy. It feels like it's almost inappropriate, but not quite. And it's just so engaging and fresh. I just, my hat's off to her. This is the first thing that I've read by Meg Ellison, and I'm so excited to pick up her other work now because I think she's a really exciting author. I also buddy read Witchmark by C.L. Pope with Leticia, a Goodreads friend. Um, we read it in her buddy read group and I enjoyed it, but this was not anywhere near as good as The Midnight Bargain, which is why I was primarily interested in it because I recently read The Midnight Bargain, absolutely loved it, thought it was so immersive and engaging and well-written. So I was just super excited to pick up everything else that C.L. Poke has written. So I picked up Witchmark with very high expectations and it wasn't bad. It really wasn't bad, but it also wasn't great. It wasn't nearly as enjoyable. I don't even know that I can articulate why, but I just didn't feel as connected with the main character. I didn't feel as immersed in the world, although the world is very interesting. The main character is likable. The situation is interesting. This was C.L. Polk's debut novel. So I don't know if maybe this was just her, you know, writing her first book and maybe not knowing how to write in as an engaging way as she is now capable of writing as she's demonstrated in The Midnight Bargain. So 
I'm really not sure if I want to pick up the second book in this trilogy. I don't know if the second book, her writing skills will improve and I'll be more engaged. But if it's the same experience as the first book, I'm not, I'm not super excited to pick it up. So please, if you have read um, this trilogy, please let me know if you think that the second book improves upon the first. And the third one actually just came out not too long ago. If it's just a matter of CL Poe getting more writing experience and getting better at writing, it's gonna be amazing because she wrote Midnight Bargain before this one. So I guess I should give it a chance. <laughs> I will admit that I part of my interest in picking up the rest of this trilogy is based on the fact that the trilogy itself will be eligible for a Best Series Hugo nomination this year, like for next year. Um, also, I mean, the latest book that just came out will also be eligible for Best Novel. Um, I, I want to say Witchmark got nominated for Nebula, at least. It might have won a... Now I need to check. Yeah, it was just a nominee, but it did get a Nebula nominee. So this is a book that has the potential to make nomination lists next year. So maybe I'll just keep reading for that reason. So I've got a lot of reasons to push for. I don't know. I'm, I'm overthinking. I also made a lot of progress on Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. This is a recent release that involves an arranged marriage and what makes this book unique? It is, it's sci science fiction. Um, so it's kind of like a romance sci-fi kind of book and it's the arranged political marriage trope where um, these people are forced to get married for political reasons and so the book explores their romance in this situation. And it's interesting because the couple is a gay couple in this case, so that switches things up a little bit from our usual. I believe that the main character is actually bisexual, and I think the other person in this partnership, I think they're gay? I'm actually not sure. I'm actually not remembering. But they were previously married to a man, but they've made clear that this other person has had many partners of many different genders, so, or at least two. I'm enjoying this book, not loving it. It's, it's a relaxing, slow-paced read. At first, I was not into it, but I kind of pushed through the first little, or just the very beginning. I was like, mm. but now I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm, in, I'm invested in these characters. I am finding it a little bit angsty and a little, there's a lot of like, ooh, you know, I wanna like, like they're both being so nice to each other and it's this, you know, angsty tension, like I'm in this awkward arranged marriage kind of thing going on. And then also the, the background kind of story is that there's all of this political intrigue. So it's a little bit of romance, a little political intrigue. They're on like a futuristic, I don't know if it's colony or what, or like it's so far in the future that we're past even talk of colonies. It's just people live on this planet now. <laughs> um, it's kind of an empire. It actually reminded me quite a bit of A Memory Called Empire and A Desolation Called Peace by Arkady Martin. Kind of similar vibes where we're out in space on different planets and there's this empire and there's lots of political intrigue and there's awkward romance kind of thing going on. The emphasis is much more on romance in this one than in a memory called Empire, Desolation Called Peace. There wasn't much romance at all in those ones. Um, but kind of a similar vibe, kind of just like a lot of getting caught up in politics and trying to figure things out. And there is a mystery and there is maybe a murder. We're not really sure. We're trying to figure it out, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm about the halfway point now. Like I said, a little bit slow paced, but I'm enjoying it for the most part. I think it's going to be a four star read for me. I also started Fireheart Tiger by Elliot de Bodard. This is a novella that recently came out and will be eligible for awards next year also. Um, I'm eye reading this one. So far so good. I'm finding it intriguing. I'm enjoying it. I'm not really sure how far I am. I want to say probably about 20% at this point. Um, I think I'll probably finish that up this week, no problem. I also went on a trip with my husband and we started, finally, um, Born a Crime by Trevor Noah as an audiobook while we were driving. This is an audiobook that my friend, my real life friend, Laura, gave me the CDs for this several years ago, like, like maybe three years ago or so. <laughs> and she's like, here, this is so good. You have to listen to it and you can just have it. Just, you know, give it to somebody else when you're done because just everybody needs to read this book. It's so good. And we were 
you know, she didn't realize we were reading through the complete works of Octavia Butler in the car and we still had a lot of those to read. <laughs> so we ended up listening to all of those over the last few years. And now we can finally, now that we've done that, we can finally listen to Born a Crime. And we almost finished it. We're on the last CD. It's actually, it's actually CDs. Um, we're really enjoying it. This is a memoir about Trevor Noah, who grew up half black, half white in apartheid South America, where, not South America, South Africa, where that was literally illegal, <laughs> which I did not even really, I, I know vague things about apartheid and South Africa. I did not realize that there were actually laws forbidding um, romantic relationships between black and white people. And, you know, the fact that Trevor was the fruition of one of those relationships and his literal existence being a crime and how he dealt with that and how that shaped his life. And then it's just like a lot of stories. And of course, if you know Trevor Noah at all from The Daily Show, he's hilarious. He's very good at telling stories. He's amazing with accents and voices and he reads his own book. So this is, it's been such a treat. We really, really loved it. I cannot wait to finish it. We're almost done. We got so close. We didn't quite, our trip wasn't quite long enough to get through the whole thing. But I highly, highly re recommend this. I think this is easily going to be a five star for me. I also sort of picked at a lot of different books. I was kind of in focus this week. I'm not even going to bother just naming off all the things that I read tiny little bits of. If I read bigger chunks of them, I'll talk about them in future videos. But for now, just know I was really unfocused. I read a lot of weird little things here and there, and I really need to fit, pick a focus going forward. So let's talk about my novelette of the week, which was The Pill by Meg Ellison. I loved this. It was so immersive. I had no trouble reading this like super, super fast. I was engaged. It was intriguing. Just the prose hooks you and draws you in. Um, I was just so wrapped up in the story. I will warn you, content warning, the way that the pill works is a little bit gross. There's kind of just like some gross body stuff about it. So if you're sensitive to that kind of stuff, maybe skip this one. But I personally didn't think it was that bad. It didn't bother me. It is gross, objectively, but I didn't mind. It explores fat phobia and the lengths that people will go to to be thin and how important that is and the differences that that can make in your life as speculative fiction. It speculates about a, a US where a pill becomes available that will make you thin but at a cost and so she just explores why people think that that cost is worth it or not worth it how it changes their lives or doesn't change their lives and i thought that it was an exceptional story really well written really thought provoking i think that this is my favorite so far I did also really enjoy Two Truths and a Lie, but I think I like this one better. I think this one is still the better novelette. Next week, I will be discussing Monster by Naomi Kritzer, and this one is available to read for free on ClarksWorld.com or Clark's World Magazine. I don't know, they have it for free online. I will link it below. It does come with an optional, you can listen to the audio or I read it. So whatever you prefer. It's always nice to have options, right? Um, I know absolutely nothing about this title or this author. I have never heard of her. Um, so I'm excited to see what this will be like. After this week, there's only one more Hugo novelette to read. So I'm really excited to wrap that up and move on to the Nebula novelette. Nebula novelette nomination. It's your alliteration of the year. <laughs> All right, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.